All right, they're getting high and they're sleeping around and they're doing all these different things. And, and that's what society's put as an example. And you wonder why there's a lot of fathers that are, that are grown up and never had a father. But, but I realized that, that as I was in the club, I started getting my groove on, started dancing, and I used to do this thing like every every uh, once in a while, my mom and dad, you know, they were Christians and stuff, and they were still going to church, and I would just kind of like hide it. I would sneak out, whatever, you know how it is. Come on, don't act like you've been an angel all your life. All right, we go up in there. And so I used to sneak, and, and you know, and, and, and this is what God did, man. This is how awesome God is. This is kind of like how, how the cave started. All right? I went to the club, and I had a couple of my friends, and we were dancing, and as I was dancing, guess what happened? Right behind two people that I was looking at, two girls that I was looking at, right behind them, all of a sudden, I seen Jesus being crucified. All of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're not supposed to be here. I'm serious. I was, I backed up. I started getting pale. I went to the back of the wall. I didn't have much to say. And I seen Jesus being crucified on the cross right in the middle of the club. And then I seen him look at me. Wow. And that shook me up. And I knew from that point forward that I would never go to the club and be able to get, get, get my groove or have as much fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was the real reality of God saying, yo, son, you look better than that. Get your butt out of there. And so my friends were like, yo, they would be trying to invite me out. What's wrong with you? I said, I got to get out of here. And long story made short, I started saying to myself, you know what? The club ain't good for me because God, God's there. You know what I'm saying? God, God is striking me now. He's not going to let me get out of the call that he has in my life. And listen, he has a call for all of us. He's reaching out to you wherever you are. And he wants, he wants you to realize how much he loves you. He wants you to get turned up for him. Not turned up in the world, but turned up for Jesus. Say, turn up for Jesus. Turn up Jesus. Guess what? It's cool to be turned up for Jesus. You hear the young people? You don't have to look like some of the people in the world. All of you know, you got your, uh, you got your, what's his name? Snoop Dogg? Man, I don't even listen to secular music like that. But you got your, you got your uh, Mari Cyrus. All these people, you got these people twerking now. They people calling it turn up. All these different things, man. But I'm telling you what, man, it's not good for us. A lot of these people are going down the wrong path and they're getting turned up in a whole wrong category. And tonight, I want to let you know that turned out for what? Turned out for Jesus looks a little bit different. What's the definition of turn? Go ahead and turn to the next slide. The definition of turn. To reverse the position or placement of. To change the position of. To change or alter the course of. Divert, deflect, to change the focus. And so what I want to do, guys, I believe God's giving me the ability to take what the world's doing, turn that for up, and to turn the position, and to turn up for Jesus. I feel like what the enemy's using to get so much influence over us, he's trying to deceive us to take us away from Jesus. The, the very same thing that the enemy's trying to use, God will just go ahead and just reverse the curse. And that we can turn it up, and change the position, and, and alter our hearts, and turn around. And, and one of the things that the Lord showed me was, turn up. Turn it up. Two words, right? Turn up. The Lord says, stop. Ready. I want them to turn and look up to me. Turn up. Stop where you're at. Look up to him. He's trying to get your attention. How is he trying to get your attention tonight? Are you going to turn him down? Or are you going to turn up for Jesus? What's your life look like? If you keep doing what you're doing, in five years, where will you be? I'm telling you, some people might be praying. I'm telling you, some of you might be in the club and you might get an overdose. I'm telling you, some people might not even know who they are, so they're trying to be like everybody around them, and that's a miserable place to be. I know that's right. You gotta find your own identity and know who you are. And guess what? When you turn up and see who he is, he's made you in the image of him, you know who you are. Amen. So the world's taking this definition to turn up for partying, but God's like, hold up. Look at me. Come a little closer. Can you hear my voice? I'm speaking to you. I'm trying to get your attention. He loves you so much. He'll do whatever it takes to get your attention. All you got to do is give me free will. It's just receive it. So my definition of turn up, go ahead to the next slide, is to get very excited, hyped, energetic, and on fire for Jesus Christ. And using, using this often includes being high or filled with the Holy Spirit. How many people like that definition better? I missed the word in there, and I was thinking about it on the way here, is passion. 
man. All you folks in here that think you've really screwed up and you turned up the way the world talks about turning up. Listen, the very same passion that you had in the world is the very same passion God's given you for him. Yeah. As hard as you went for the world, as, as hard as you went to the clubs and you slept around and you did a little bit of drinking and you got high and you just, you could do, you could say you've done everything in the book. You know what was very special about you is once, once you give your life to Christ, you go so hard for God. Yeah. You get so turned up for Jesus. There ain't no stopping to you because you're so fired up, so passionate, so sold out. I'm telling you, man, we need more people like that for Baltimore City to come to know and realize how much God loves them. We need more people in the city to get turned up for Jesus and stop getting turned up for the world. Yeah. You know what's so cool about it, turned up for Jesus? You know what's so cool about it? Man, it feels good. To know that I can say no to evil. Do you know what I'm saying? Hear me out real quick. I was talking to Tabitha earlier. When you get turned up for Jesus, listen, it doesn't mean that temptation stops knocking on your door. It doesn't mean that you don't struggle no more. There's always going to be a struggle, but the struggle is over because you keep looking up to where your heart comes from. Jesus is there all the way. Every time, every time you think he's not there, it's a lie of the enemy. Because he says in the Bible, open up the book, it says, I'll never leave you. Lord will save you. A lot of people know that, right? Yeah. Jesus is with you every step of the way. He's with you every step of the way. So what, what's up is, is when you turn up for Jesus, what's so cool about it is that the enemy thinks that he's got you. He's, he thinks he's got you trapped. He thinks he's got you set up. He thinks that the next time that temptation comes around, you're going to slip up. You're going to fail. The other day, I had a little temptation come my way. All right? We all have temptations. Jesus had temptations. And you know what happened? I thought to myself for a second. I said, heck no. Now listen, how many people actually are there behind a closed door in your character? No one's looking around. You can easily open up the laptop and, and type in something like pornography. Or you can open up uh, a, a pack of cigarettes and try to smoke it behind your parents' back. How many times have you had this temptation and you've given in? When you turn up for Jesus, this is so cool. You say, heck no. He says, I, I'm never going to the cave, and I'm tired of being turned up for the world. I'm being turned up for Christ from now on. You say, heck no. You know what that does? <laughs> Man, in an hour or two, you might have been struggling. You look back on that, and you're like, wow. Thank you, God, for your grace. Your grace gave you power yes. to overcome that. And you're like, Man, man it feels good to, to, to know that, hey, the one that thought he had me, wow. heck no. He don't got nothing on me because God's grace is more than enough for me. It's sufficient for me, and I overcome that sucker. And I'm better than that. That's not who I am in the first place. It feels really good when you know you get to act the character that you are by the, by the God that created you the way that you were supposed to be, and not in this world system that we're growing up in, the sinful nature. You are a son. You are a daughter. You belong to God, so act like it. Turn up for Jesus. There's something by turning up for Jesus that's in your spirit that gets connected with God. And man, I tell you what, things that you struggle with now just start dropping like chains. Start dropping. I got a picture of a bird up here. It was, it was actually supposed to come up for this side. I thought it was funny. Bird saying, turn down for what? <laughs> but it's probably not funny for all the, all the birds that we cooked tonight, you know, you and I had for dinner. All right, so I got a passage of scripture for you. It comes out of Luke 14, 16 through 19. I got about another 11 minutes. And we're going to have a chance and an opportunity for you to give your heart to Christ. I really, the real reason for this is so that you can have a relationship with Jesus. That's why we do what we do. This is, the cave is meant to be the invitation spot for anybody that you know that probably wouldn't go to church to come check it out. When you have a night where they can eat all the food they want, man, what a better way to get someone to come here and the next thing they know, they find out who God is. Amen. Use the cave as your resource to reach this world for Jesus. This is awesome. We work very hard to do it. I want to see more salvation. That's what I'm about. Yes, Tonight, I'm going to give you some salvation. Luke 14, 16 through 19, and the message, it says this. Jesus bowed up. Yes, for there was once a man who threw a great dinner. Party. Does that sound familiar? There was once a man who was doing a great dinner party. Don't be getting tired on me. I know that turkey makes you tired. Shake yourself up. When it was time for dinner, he sent out his servant to the invited guests, saying, come on in. The food's on the table. 
Then they all began to beg off one after another, making excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of property and need to look it over, send my regrets. Another said, I just bought five teams of oxen and I really need to check them out, send my regrets. To the next slide, Luke 14, 20-24 says in the story, yet another said, I just got married and need to get home to my wife. The servant went back and told the master what had happened. He was outraged and told the servant quickly, get into the city streets and the alleys, put all who look like they need a square meal. All the misfits and homeless and wretched you can lay your hands on. Bring them in. Bring them here. The servant reported back, Master, I did what you commanded, and there's still room. The master said, then go to the country roads, go to the highways and the byways. Whoever you find, drag them in. I want my house full. Let me tell you, not one of these originally invited is going to get so much as a bite at my dinner party. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I feel the Holy Spirit on that. That's deep. I woke up this morning and I was asking God, what passage did you want me to read? And this is what I woke up, woke up, literally, I opened my eyes and the Lord was like, I want you to read the passage about the great dinner and that he invited, the king invited people out. Some didn't make it. And then he went out all over to grab those that, that he wanted there. He wanted the house full. And here it is. Tonight we have all the food you can eat. Plenty of leftovers. And by the way, if you guys want to take some home, we'll work that out. I don't know if my boy Jeff's in the back, but I do want to get some plates for those that are hungry and you don't have enough food home. You want to be able to bless you, all right? But hear me out. In Matthew, I just read Luke. In Matthew, this is it's a very similar parable and story. But what it is, is actually a king. And he, he's had a, a, a big feast and a supper for his son. And he's invited, the king has invited people to come. And they were making excuses about not coming. What's this sound like? Think about it. If a king said, come to my feast, I want you to come and partake. I want you to come and celebrate. And you turn down a king. Back in the biblical times in the kingdom, that would be like uh, against the law. If the king requested your attention, requested your time, it would be like there would be a consequence for not honoring that. And so, before I talk about the consequences of not honoring that, I want to talk about the four turn-ups for Jesus that we get from this passage. Turn-up number one, next slide, is this is a turn-up for Jesus because how you can turn up is by accepting the invitation to a party that's already prepared for you. Yeah. You don't have to do anything but show up. How many people know that's good? Yeah. How many people like people to throw parties for you? Yeah. The king in the Bible happens to represent God your father. And he wants to throw a party for you. It's got your name all over it. As a matter of fact, it's already prepared. All you got to do is know how to receive what he's given you. This party that he's throwing to Matthew is for his son. Receive everything that God's son, Jesus, has done and given you. Turn up for Jesus. How you do it? Just accept the invitation. Say, I accept the invitation. Say, I accept the word of God. And I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I declare, turn up for Jesus. Turn up number two. Next slide. In this passage of scripture, we see in turn up number two, another way you can turn up is that when you come to this great supper, you got unlimited provision. What does that mean? When you look at all the food that we had today, and you look at God the Father, everything that you ever needed is there. You get the, the ability to receive your needs met. But what does that look like? For some people, you might be dealing with sickness. Did you know that a part of God's provision when you turn up for Jesus is healing your body? Some of you guys might be looking for more power in your life so that you can resist the devil. Guess what? When you accept and you turn up for Jesus and you come to be a part of the great supper and you take time to, to have a relationship and eat with the Father, then guess what? You get provision. You get strength to overcome anything that he throws your way. There's a lot of things that we could get from this. And I want to encourage you, this is two out of four. Let's go to number three. Turn up number three. What do we get from this passage? Fullness. How many people in the world do you know that has everything that you can think of? I'm talking about celebrities and people like Robert Williams commit suicide. Why does this happen? Because they were empty. They weren't full. You know what? God wants you 
you to be full tonight. God wants to feed you. He wants to feed your spirit. He wants you to read the word. He wants you to, he wants you to be able to spend time with him to worship. Because in that, it builds your spirit up. And you become full. And you become satisfied. How many people after your second plate, you felt your belly just pop out a little bit? How many people know that's a pretty good feeling? You know, you can walk, up, you can walk around like that every day, 24-7. Sold out for God and full at the same time. How many people like to be full? Yeah. And when you're full, you become like a giant in the enemy's territory. When you become full, you get out there, you go to school, and people are like, man, what you been doing? You're like, yo, I've been reading the word, and I got turned up for Jesus, and man, you need to find out what this is all about, because it is cool being turned up for the Lord. Yeah. Turn up number four. What's this passage you talk about? Turn up number four says that basically it's an invitation to have a relationship with Jesus. He wants to spend time with you. This relationship is greater than any religion. Any way that you want to make it look like, you want to organize, you want to say, you know, uh, new age stuff and all these different things, man, this is an invitation to have a relationship with Jesus. He wants to have a relationship with you. I tell people sometimes, I'll be in the car, I'll be talking. I know that's right. People will be pulling up next to me, and I'll be, they'll be like this, right? And they'll go over, this is white boy, they'll go over, this is white boy, like. <laughs> <laughs>
How are you going to try to have a life full of fullness when you got sin in your back closet? It's just not going to work. As hard as you try, you want to lie miserable. As hard as you try to worship, you want to lie on feel nothing. Come on. Once you try, turn it down sin and turn it down all these four things in order to turn out and give God 90 days. Once you try it out and see what happens. I encourage you guys, because we turn down sin, how do we turn down sin? To the next slide. What's salvation all about? You can't turn down sin yourself. It just wasn't possible, so God made it possible. He made it possible through His Son, Jesus Christ. I like to look at it like this. I've used this story a lot. I think it helps a lot of people. For those who have never heard it, I think you'll be blessed. Jesus and His blood does the same thing that this story does. There was a story of two mama sheep. One mama sheep gave birth to a child, but mama died. And the second mama sheep gave birth to the child, and the child died. So what the farmer did was took the blood of the dead baby and put it on the baby that was alive so the mama that lost his baby could take that one as her own. Does that make sense? And so with the blood of Jesus, God doesn't know you because of sin. He loves you. The sin doesn't change his love for you, but sin in your life changes your love for him. And Jesus' blood is there so that that blood can just wash away all your sins. And then that scent of his blood, he can, he can know you that you're his. And he wants to give you that invitation to receive the precious gift of Jesus so that you can be in one with God. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Go to the next slide. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We can get the uh, worship team up here to play some music in the background. I want to read this last verse. Go to the next slide, Luke 14, 13 through 15. I think this is pretty cool. This passage right here is exactly the passage right before the passage I just read to you guys tonight. Right before... This is what's in Luke 14, 13 through 15. This is what's before 16 through 24. It says, then he turned to the host. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors, the kind of people who will return the favor. Invite some people who never get invited out, the misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. You're being an experience of blessing. They won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how will we return at the resurrection of God's people? 15 says, that triggered a response for one of the guests. How fortunate the one who gets to eat dinner in God's kingdom. How fortunate is it to be able to eat dinner in God's kingdom? What a blessing that we have food here. We got to partake. We got to eat. Man, I thank God that I was able to help. If the KT was able to help, feed everybody tonight. We all got full bellies. But that's physically. But spiritually, he wants you to be able to start eating his word. He wants you to be able to start taking time to spend one-on-one -on -one with him. It's so great, man. I, I can't do it for you. You have to try it on your own and, and, and experience the presence of God when that, when that happens. It's incredible when you take the time. You stop everything else around you. I get really, really busy. I got college. I got my t-shirt business. I got my job. I got the church. I got the kid. I got all these things going on. I got a test. I got a I got stress, I got it. But God's like, stop. Turn up. Come on. See me. And the light just comes on. Everything else around you just fades. Because the one thing that remains true is the love that He has for you. In the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your shortcomings, in the midst of everything that's going on in your life, turn up. It's a blessing to be able to feast. It's a blessing to be able to have a relationship with God. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for doing what you did. Thank you for accepting us. So with all heads bowed, nobody looking around. If you're like that sheep that doesn't have a mama, you feel like you're an orphan. You feel like you don't, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You 
feel like maybe you've been snacking. Maybe you've been turning up for the world. Maybe you've been turning down the things of God. But God's like, turn those things up. Whoever you are, just put them. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Because guess what? I was the one that walked forward at one point in time. And guess what? I do it a whole lot. You know why? Because I get hungry for God. If it takes me coming to the front to get closer, to be able to show him I mean business, I do it. I don't care what people think. I don't care about the opinions of people. If I want to get mine, I get mine. Just like some of you guys are too. When you get determined for something, no matter what your friends say, you do it anyway. Well, tonight, man, there's an invitation. And if you want a relationship with Jesus, if you want to turn up, if you want to draw close to him so he can draw close to you, and you've never received Jesus in your heart, you may have been to church before, but you never really got a relationship, you never really met business. Tonight, if you feel like you want to take this night and make this a day that you that you give all to God and you want to receive Jesus in your life, just go ahead and raise your hands in this place. I see a hand right there. I see two hands. God bless you. Three, four, five, six, seven. Praise the Lord. First time people have never, ever, ever given their life to Christ. I thank God for that. Anybody else? This is what it's about. This is where Holy Spirit comes in. Not by my words, but by His power. By His might. He's in this place. He's moving on the hearts of the people. I see a lot of hands. So what I want to do is have everybody stand up to your feet. Everybody in this place, stand up to your feet, please. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, were you one of those that raised their hand? I want to go to the front with you. If I can get the cover team up front. Some people that, that have the gift to pray, that love praying with people. I want you to come to the front. And if you want prayer tonight, and you gave your heart to Christ, I want you to come down here so we can say a corporate prayer together. And anything else that you need, that you need prayer for, we're going to pray with you. So as we keep having people come down, I'm going to go ahead and just ask everybody to pray this prayer with me. We get a couple more prayer warriors. Turn up for Jesus. I thank God that people turn up for Jesus right now. Thank you, God. So all together, I want you guys to repeat after me. And then you guys have this prayer. You can talk to one of the prayer members and let them know what you want prayer for. But all together, take Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died. And you rose again. I confess. That I'm in need of you. I want a relationship with you, Jesus. I want to turn up Jesus. I want your blood to wash me clean. I receive all that you have for me. I take the invitation to your party. I take the provision that you've given me.